What up? This is Dart Adams. I'm here. Any hip hop and killer boombox here with the legendary Pete Rock. Peace. A lot of y'all don't know this, but I have family from Mount Vernon and um the McBrides. What up? Um my cousin Anzetti and my cousin used to always hit me up talking about we got all these people coming out in Mount Vernon doing great things. My boy Dwight, he's just got signed to MCA. There's this kid named Peter who stays in the basement scratching. He's gonna be better than GJ Jazzy Jeff one day. This is this man right here. I'm um, not better than Jazzy Jeff on a DJ tip. <laughs> uh, he, he'll roast me on the, on the DJ tip, and he's just as talented as a producer. But big shout out to Jazzy Jeff, though. Absolutely. He's an inspiration to a lot of us growing up, just like here. So um, when I was a kid growing up, uh, my cousins in Mount Vernon used to always tell me about um, Heavy D and the boys and what they were doing when they just signed the MCA Uptown. Um, so I just want to talk about Heavy D because he was a huge inspiration to me and a whole bunch of other people. We put a whole bunch of people on the game. Uh, he was a producer. He was an MC. He was a dot connector. Man, just uh, could we just talk about Heavy D for a minute there? Well, I knew I knew him before all of that. Yeah. So it goes way back since we were kids. You know what I mean? So that's my cousin. So we're family and. Um, you know, family's family, and he's, he was a big, it was a big loss to everyone in Absolutely. the community, but we love him to death, and his music lives on, yes. and all the great things he's become, mm -hmm. you know, all I wanted to do was be just like him, yep. and uh, follow in his footsteps. Coming up with uh, DJ Eddie F and the Untouchables, uh, did a whole bunch of great work. Um, another thing I need to talk about you with. Remixes. So we all know that, like, since like the whole BDS game happened with uh, the radio, uh, remixes don't have different beats. So it's like songs have the same beats now. Yeah. So they're recognized by the BDS machine, so they get more spins. Right. But you were a master of the remix. Thank you. Appreciate right. that, man. All right. So one thing we need to talk about, is, as far as remixes is concerned, is why I'm setting this up. My all-time favorite Pete Rock remix isn't. The Shut Em Down remix for Public Enemy. For me, it's Lisa Baby. Oh, wow. The Lisa Baby remix you did Father for Father MC. MC. Yeah, could you please talk about just remixing, especially um, that one? I, I really like that remix because it was like expressing myself and, you know, just putting different elements of sound together and not caring, uh, you know, of the clash it may sound like, but, you know, making it hip hop, just making it sound interesting and yeah. um to me father mc was was a uh, interesting artist and uh his music was dope but the mu the remix like just kind of brought the lyrics more over the top yeah it really did because the original version it's like had uh, jodeci on it yeah it's like it's way more pronounced but when you hear the lisa baby remix that pete rock did takes it to a whole nother level yeah definitely there's man. levels Thank to you. this shit yes all right so another thing we need to discuss as far as Pete Rock is concerned, um, I talked to Grab, and we were just talking about like, like your early studio sessions and stuff like that. Like, um, yeah. cause your early studio sessions, um, you started working with um, Groupy Chill. Yeah. And he was talking about like when he saw you in the studio for the first time, he wouldn't have known that that was your first time in the studio. Well, it wasn't my first time in the studio. It was the first time in the studio working. Yeah. On my own, for the first time. Yeah. Um, I've been in the studio plenty of times with other people. That's how I learned to be in the studio yeah. on my own. But it wasn't an easy trip at first. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn, and I learned quickly. And I've always been a fast learner. So, you know, I quickly caught on and um, just continued to move forward with my craft, man. And that's, and that's what I did. Cool. All right. So when are we going to get another Peach Instrumentals? Real that's soon. That's the question. Real soon. This year. Word. Um, definitely after May. Mm -hmm. All right, good, good, good. Summertime release. All right. So, like, all of us old heads know that Pete Rock is a huge comic book fan. Yeah. All right. So, I'm split. I'm torn because the new Avengers, like, okay, so the first Avengers joint, they were missing so many cats. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so they fight a whole, like, a whole space army with yeah. four people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's like. How do you feel about the upcoming Avengers movie? And it's like how Black Panther isn't a, isn't in it. And it's like there are people on the fringes, but they just don't bring them in. 
I don't know. I think they're a little slow on the ball with certain characters. Yeah. I think Marvel is really on top of the game right now with all the movies they got. But a lot of them that that, that they're putting out needs to be th thoughtfully thought out more. Yeah. You know, especially character-wise. Like, you know, people are used to these stories. Used to, um, you know, part one and part two. Yeah. If you put out a a cartoon DVD of part one and part two, then people are going to expect to see characters like Black Panther in exactly. part two at least. You know what I'm saying? Not not just flashes or quick, quick, quick scenes of, of a person in a black cat suit that we may think is pa Like black cameos. Pan yeah, we don't like that. We want to see the character. We want to see you put Black Panther in. Exactly. So, yeah. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, like one of the things I always wanted to do is I wanted to see Marvel like come out with like a Marvel Knights side studio and dedicate more stuff to like lower budget films, the street level, to like lower level Marvel characters that are more character driven, and then push those instead of just to trying. To me, to push it's like what's the big rush? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like to what to where you feel like, um, you know, uh, you have to put these movies out minus certain important characters exactly like, like giant man he should have been in the first one taking henry pym out the henry whole pym equation is ridiculous hank pym should have been in the first one absolutely and um to me those were the two boo-boos yeah. between part one and part two not showing black panther in at oh, least part two not. and then part one not having hank pym yeah, I mean, Henry what, Pym or of course, everybody knows. Anybody who knows me knows what fucks me up is the fact that they're slow bringing in Luke Cage and Iron Man and, and like well, those are straight to Netflix now. You yeah, know, they're yeah, coming. They're doing a Netflix series. They're doing uh, Luke Cage on Netflix and Daredevil. So yeah. those are not going to be in the movies because Daredevil, when it hit, was in the movies, it wasn't didn't get a, a lot uh, good ratings. It was so, terrible. Yeah, I mean, you see what they did to Electro Man? Come on. Yeah, but yeah. like. I do know like Netflix, Netflix is gonna like have original series of stuff. They're gonna start with like Luke Cage's wife and then bring her in and everything. But like, all right. So one last thing we need to discuss is um like how you are the key inspiration, one of the key inspirations, if not the key inspiration as far as production is concerned for Dilla. Like Jay Dilla pretty much came up like listening to everything you made and was and and pretty much wanted to either do that or improve on it if it was possible yeah he did that he definitely improved on it and um he became my favorite producer so mm -hmm. no big deal yeah I, I love Dilla you know he's a good guy good humble quiet individual mm -hmm. and um you know I was glad to you know share some time with him mm -hmm. before he left us absolutely know? Grap told me a ridiculous story about how uh, he was listening to a Dilla joint and he said you told him that Dilla not only produced the beat, but he actually was playing over the beat. Yeah, he was. He plays with the samples too, so yeah. that's what makes him even doper. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, man was a meta human. Definitely, rest in peace to Jay Dilla, man. Rest in peace. The man was a meta human in every sense of the word. Um, so pretty much that's all we're going to do right now because the yeah, man Pete Rock, now. Pete Rock's going to tear it down after Slum Village rocks. Um, so... Just want to say thank you for everything you've done for the music and all your contributions to the culture. Thanks. I appreciate it having this conversation with you, sir. All right. So one. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's the Soul Brother number one. You're checking out any hip-hop. Peace. <laughs>